Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, dinner time is here. That's right. We're talking about season two, episode 13, the season finale of Hannibal on Dish by Dish. Greetings and salutations, internet people. This is your old pal Patrick Hamilton coming to you once again for the final time this season from the Baltimore Institute for the Criminally Insane. This is the Dish by Dish podcast, our Kill by Kill spinoff, where we talk about an episode of Hannibal and the order in which it aired. And of course, we're talking about the season finale of season two, Mizu Mono. And uh, of course, there's only one person I trust that based on the weird confluence of our past, if you merged our faces together, no one would notice. The one, the only Gina Radcliffe. How are you doing today, Gina? Uh, good, but I thought you were going to say uh, I'd be the only one you would trust that if I was uh, here grievously injured with a with a, a slash wound to the neck that I would, you know, stagger over and attempt to uh, <laughs> to to cover the the spurting wound with my hand. Your bare hand, and it just comes out between your two fingers. Yeah, be- because I'm because I'm actively dying myself. <laughs> Hard to get a grip when you've been gutted. Um, oh my God, this episode. I just I uh, I I I don't remember how um I made it through the week <laughs> between the these episodes back when they were broadcast on television I can only imagine how hyped up I was for this particular uh episode given uh the greatness of episode 12 and if you want to hear it our reaction to episode 12 you didn't miss it it's in your podcast feed Uh, We've been doubling up on Dish by Dish because, uh, you know, Halloween season is upon us and we kind of have to clear the decks in order to hit all of the little things that we've got coming your way. Uh, So for whatever reason, the the first episode in in your your podcast, you know, (laughs) uh, catcher. Uh, that's a real episode. Download it and listen to it. I don't, there's about a hundred people who sort of only want the latest one and forget the one underneath it. Just go for it. Listen to both of them. They're, it's worth your time and attention. I promise. Jane, are you with us? I'm here. Okay. <laughs> no backup on this. You want yes, people to you, skip you, that you, one episode? Yes, you should absolutely do that. <laughs> Please do this, Gina. All right, get to it. God damn it, I got things to do. Anyways, um, let's get to it. We've got things to do. Um, And it starts with uh, a Will having conversations with both Hannibal and Jack about the the various planes they have that the other one doesn't know about, but the other one actually does know about uh, because Will is a double serial killer agent. And it ends with this merging of both Hannibal and Jack and finally a merging of the two halves of Will. And my question to you, Gina, did this opening scene inform Mandy? You know, it would it would not surprise me. I mean, it's obviously a different technique of what is going on. But to me, it felt like some, like, you know, it was seen... And they're like, we should do something like that. Obviously not copying it directly, but what an interesting idea in the sort of merging of storytelling and character. And I immediately thought of Mandy. I I just, uh, I mean, that scene in Mandy is spectacular. Oh, it Um, is so unsettling. Yes. Um, And, and it's unto itself. I, you know, I'm not saying, oh, they're, co-, you know, he copied David Slade, but I think David Slade creates something like he is so good at directing Hannibal. I just, I want to see more from David Slade. I, I feel like, oh, my chair is there, so there, fucking squeaky. There's um, a lot, there's a lot of really genuinely beautiful cinematography. In the, I mean, throughout the show as a whole, but particularly in this episode, yes. like the, the particular, you know, and I, you would, People who are watching along with us, uh, I would call attention to whenever rain is shot, mm-hmm. and it just looks very, very, very mystical and beautiful. Yeah, it it just I think every part of this episode, once it reaches Hannibal's house, is 
just giving you the most cinematic version of Hannibal you could ever give. It's, yeah, you even, you even have a, you even have a shot of him walking out of his house in slow motion. Right. <laughs> everything's cool. Everything's gory. Everything's covered in blood. All the characters are converging. I mean, it brings everything it has to the table. And it's like, because Hannibal, the production, and Brian Fuller and company, never really knew whether or not they were coming back until after, you know, the entire season had aired. I think they tried to always end on a banger, you know, (laughs) just something that would make the audience go, Oh my God, I can't wait to see how they get out of this one. You know, it, they really understand. And this is odd coming from us. (laughs) What a finale truly is. Obviously the show is very operatic And to that point, they know how to hit a crescendo. And this episode is a real fucking crescendo. You know, I, I generally try to avoid uh, fandom if I, if I can, Mm -hmm. uh, because it it invariably ends up being sort of being weird and toxic. Sure. So I wish I, but going back, rewatching this, I wish I knew how people initially reacted to yeah. to the ending of this episode, <laughs> yeah, particularly if they didn't see the the um, the post credit sequence. What is the? Wait a second, I didn't see the post credit sequence. When you see Hannibal on the plane with the uh, with um, Videlia. Oh no, my thing kind of crapped out. <laughs> No, no they run. They run full credits, uh, oh. and then you get the shot with uh, with with Hannibal on the on the on the plane speaking the Frenchy French with uh, oh. with, with Bedelia. And he, we get we get a stinger, do we? Yeah, and we never oh. had that before. So so there's no reason why anybody would think to hang around for that. True, very very true. Um, yeah, that, that must have blown people's minds. Right, it's like, wait, everybody died. <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh my God. Yeah. Cause it, and, and even, I mean, the, the wonderful thing that I love about the formal credits ending is that it ends on blue sky and clouds, like it's highway to heaven. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, holy shit. <laughs> they really know how to stick a fucking landing on this show. They sure do. Like now everybody, everybody has ascended. Yes. And I'm reminded we might be backtracking a little bit, but we didn't talk about it in episode 12. Jack was warned by uh, Dr. Bedelia that if Hannibal, uh, if he thinks that he has Hannibal cornered, it's only because Hannibal wants him to think that. So he's warned ahead of time. Like you may think you have all your, your I's dotted and T's crossed, but there's no way you're out thinking Hannibal when it comes to this. Like he's always known someone was going to come for him. He has a fucking plan. Um, and well, that's, a, well, that's, like, a, that's the thing. Every, you know, one of the, one of the, the common threads in, in this show with almost all the characters is, is they all think they're smarter than everybody else. Yes. True. And they're plenty smart. They're just, none of them happen to be smarter than Hannibal. Right. <laughs> and they're somewhat fooling themselves that they are. So Jack is kind of going into this with a fuck around and find out attitude, you know? And uh, before he goes, we, the return of Cade Purnell arrives and uh, she's like, "Uh, you're, I don't like anything that's happening here. I don't like what you've done uh, for the past 12 episodes. (laughs) This is a shit show. Uh, There's constantly new Chesapeake Rippers. You had a guy who killed a guy and then mutilated him and kept him on your staff. She's like, well, killed in, in self-defense. She's like, we don't have any evidence of that. And he's kind of like, well. Also, also, pe- also people who kill someone in self-defense tend to not stretch their, their severed heads over, a, <laughs> uh, over the skeleton of a cave bear. But it would have been in his last will and testament. Like, come on. Like it's what he wanted. 
<laughs> you can't say it's not what he wanted. He also wanted to kill people in his robo bear costume. And he did. Uh, oh my God. It's so fucking wild. Um, and then you have the, you know, fake death of Freddie Lowndes of, of murder stab dot biz. Um, <laughs> a t-shirt I've still fucking around trying to design and I'm very bad at it. Um, but I promise it'll come one day. Uh, and so she's like, I'm shutting all of this down. And Alana's like, please don't, because we're good. By, we're about to catch the Chesapeake Ripper. And she's like, give me a fucking break. <laughs> There's no Chesapeake Ripper left. Like where this is, whatever is happening here, people need to go to jail. I'm going to arrest Jack and I'm going to arrest Will. And to that, I'm like, why didn't you just fucking arrest them right away? Why didn't yeah, you know, a lot of the, a lot of stuff that ultimately happens in this episode is because people just take too long to make their move. Right. And, you know, we've known since the first episode that Jack and, and, and Hannibal are going to have a massive fight in the pantry and we get to see it again. It's just as brutal as it was the first time, if not more so. Um, Jack, uh, manages to, uh, cut, you know, put a door between him and Hannibal, but he still has a piece of glass in his fucking neck. Um, and he's trying to call his wife who we know is still alive and very pissed, <laughs> uh, at the fact that Hannibal, uh, denied her what, uh, she wanted to do with the end of her life. And so, uh, oh. It's just rough, man. Every, every part of this is rough. Yeah, it's like the, the last 15 minutes of the show are just nonstop graphic violence. Yeah. Because then Alana shows up. She sees that a door is ajar and she hears gunshots. And is, or does she, I don't even think she actually hears gunshots. I think she just says there's gunshots because she's got a gun in her hand. So and, she, I think she's like, there's about to be gunshots. Yeah. <laughs> Time is elastic. Gunshots are coming. And she they, wanders in and, you know, gun drawn, just as, uh, you, you know, Will had told her to do, buy gun, practice. And so she's got Hannibal in her sight. And he's like, oops, doodles, I took your bullets. <laughs> <laughs> Which she obviously should have guessed that he might do that. Yes, right. What no one possibly could have guessed, and I managed to forget entirely, uh, is that she runs upstairs, locks herself in the bedroom, and lo and behold, who's in the closet? Our old pal, Abigail. Yeah, that, that's another, like, what? Oh, come on, moment. <laughs> <laughs> like, is she missing an ear? Was that actually her ear? Was that somebody else's ear? Well, you know, they, they seem to be able to come up with spare body parts a lot for <laughs> for these kinds of things. Like they, they you know, I, I don't know what, you know, poor you know, vagrant stood in for, for Freddie Lowndes' body, but. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> they've, they've just got as spares at the ready. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, they just, you know, it had a dental bridge that they could use to, you know, yeah, that's Freddie Lowndes' teeth. All right. <laughs> Um, and she's like, what is going on? Before she really knows, Abigail takes a runner at her and pushes her out the second story window. And there goes, uh, she, she, she does Alana. a, she does a Hans Gruber, <laughs> you know, looking very shocked all the way down. Yes. Very shocked. Um, the, if, if Hannibal's going to crib, it's only going to crib for the bet from the best. Uh, and she lands outside just flat on her back on concrete, Ooh, still right. somehow breathing when, when Will gets there. Yes. Uh, you know, I don't know how, but yeah, enough people in this show they, are, are very, very, very tough. They're very resistant. They're hard to perish. Uh, as it were, as, as we will see in season three, like people, characters you have assumed, well, surely they must be dead. <laughs> I'm just going to leave it at that. <laughs> and uh, as such, 
uh, Will pulls up in a fucking taxi. He evaded the police with the use of a taxi. Okay. <laughs> Again, we're not coming to Hannibal for reality. <laughs> It's like in the critic when the the episode where he has the woman stalking him and 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 they both get in a cat they they both follow each other in a cab and at one point they go over the Brooklyn Bridge and it plays a scene from Taxi. <laughs> <laughs> oh my, that's a good reference. And uh, <laughs> and he's like, oh, you look like you're in pain. Here's my jacket. And then he goes inside. Yeah, and, and here's, I mean, the thing that I couldn't help but notice is, like, uh, did Alana not call the police about 10 minutes ago? Oh, yeah, no. This is... Uh, there's, the a, police... there's, there's a lot of time for, 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 for talking before the cops get there. If they, if they, I guess they eventually get there. Yeah, well, when they call the cops the fucking wolf trap, they're there in a millisecond, whereas in downtown goddamn Baltimore, you call the cops, you're like... We'll get there when we get there, I guess. Come on, man, it's raining. <laughs> I got what do this you want fresh from us? donut. Mm, I was going to deny this guy his rights. All right. Okay. <laughs> um, and so in walks Will, and he's like, all right, man, I got you dead to rights. Uh, and um, Hannibal's like, come on. Don't you remember the allegory of the teacup? I'm going to, you know, I dropped it and I hoped it would come back together. And then, then he points off and fucking Abigail's right there. And it completely throws off Will's game. But I have to add that we have another callback in this episode to the very first episode of Hannibal. And that is that Will calls up Hannibal and says, they know. Yes. He fucking warns him. He warned him. And and what? then he gets there. He's like, oh, you didn't leave. <laughs> you know? It's like, Will, are you? Why? Why are you trying to help him escape why, after all this why, time? Why would, why would you then fucking show up if he was not going to be there? Why? And why would he think that he would leave? I don't. It, I'm very confused. Um. This is where I think we get into we're of the level of these two are in love with one another. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Because it's gone beyond a friendship or a connection to the point where it really is about this intimate relationship that they can't get anywhere else. And despite logic, they just refuse to adhere to logic because they're in love. And so far, so, so they don't have to be concerned with it. Yeah, I mean, I think Will would be perfectly, I don't know, happy is the right word I would use because I don't know if Will is, is capable of happiness. Yeah. Very, very glum boy. Very, very sad boy. <laughs> very sad boy. He needs a, a well that he could talk to. <laughs> SNL commercial of wells for sad boy. Yeah. <laughs> but I think he would prefer to to spend the rest of his life doing this dance with Hannibal. Yeah. I Yeah, I mean... Cue up your Batman and Joker relationship sort of deal. Uh, they want to do the dance. That's what that's more important than the actual catching. Um, and as a result, when Abigail's introduced, it's kind of like, well, now he's got Will by the nuts. And of course, Abigail is right in the zone where she has no control over her own mind or actions. So when Hannibal goes, yeah, come over here. Uh, I'm going to put you in the same position that your dad did and when he tried to kill you. And so we'll see how it goes this time. And he totally slices her neck. And there's more blood from that neck slice than in any Friday the 13th movie. Oh, yeah. This is Spurton. Yes. And a lot, and of, corn, a lot of corn syrup in this episode. For sure. Uh, and Will gets it in the gut, and he's bleeding everywhere, and he's trying to cover things up. Yeah, and that's then, uh, that's that that's that Manhunter reference again, because that mm -hmm. is the the injury that that Will Graham has canonically suffered right. by uh, by Hannibal Lecter. Yes, and it does. I mean, this does kind of solve that mystery so much better than the remake version of Red Dragon that was seen, where they try to. I don't know. 
it, it's very down to earth and everything, but it's just one of those, like you would never be, uh, I don't know. I, I won't say that it's PTSD, but this is a more rational explanation for when Jack tries to recruit will to come back to try to catch this guy why he doesn't want to come back because who the fuck would want to get involved in this business anymore when this is what happens to you? Right. Oy, 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 oy. This, is a, this is a wild, wild, wild fucking ride, Gina. Yeah, I mean, you are pretty certain by the end of the episode that everybody is, is, is you know, if not already dead, is dying. Yes. You've got you've got Jack trying bleed, bleeding out in the pantry. He's trying to call his wife, and he just sort of it sort of looks like he stops breathing at one point. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, Abigail appears appears very dead. You know, yes. uh, Will is basically you know holding his guts in, mm-hmm. and you know, Alana probably can't feel anything from like the waist down. Yeah, if not the neck. Um, it's it is bad, and then of course you get the highway to heaven visuals. The only thing missing is someone singing knock, knock, knocking on heaven's door. Like, <laughs> the only thing. The what a friend thing. we have in Jesus. <laughs> and so there we have it. Um, it is season two. And so we must ask um, if you had to choose a season of Hannibal that we've watched for Dish by Dish, which one would you choose and why? Season one. Or season two? Um, I think that if you are going in hoping for something that has the vibe of Silence of the Lambs predominantly, that's that's the movie in this, this whole series people are the most familiar with. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're gonna want you're gonna want season one. Se- yeah. Season one is is I don't want to call it a procedural, but it's much more straightforward. They put on the, a procedural suit. Right. Like a person suit. Right. right. Whereas season two is just like, you know, cloud cuckoo land. It, it's, <laughs> you you nothing, as we keep, as we keep repeating, you know, it, it exists in, you know, a world that looks like ours, but, but isn't ours. Mm-hmm. And I think that if you are, you know, if you will prefer a, a more, you know, linear narrative, a, a more realistic narrative. Um, right. You're not going to be, this is not going to be your vibe too much. No. But if you're looking for like a, a just a, a Baroque nightmare, that this is, <laughs> this is, this is the one. Yes. Um, I am of two minds because I do kind of miss those great, amazing serial killer of the week episodes. Because there's amazing stuff explored in them. Some incredible visuals, great characters. It's a great way to build a bond between an audience. And uh, was that thunder on your end or yes. an airplane on my no, it's, it's, it's thunder. <laughs> it's thunder. Good. 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 I hope Thor arrives. <laughs> and uh, I don't know why I said good. Um, and here there's so many amazing moments that i love from this end of it um i just feel like the first half of season two when when will is in jail is a little too turned around it's it's a great way to end season one and then you have to get yourself out of that corner you painted yourself into and that's a little sweaty. Whereas the second half of the season is so fucking amazing that it makes up for all of that. I don't know. It's really hard to choose. I love them both. Maybe that's it. Maybe I ruined the game. They're, 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 they're great for two completely different reasons. Yes. And yet the characters are consistent. There's no, uh, you know, grand turn of, you know, like in the Fast and the Furious movies where like Ludacris is a guy who installs car radios and then all of a sudden he's the greatest hacker in the world. They never make that jump, no. uh, but they should. They should invite Ludacris in for season four. Um, uh, but it just manages to take these characters and put them into just a different kind of format that flows throughout this particular season. And the highs are so goddamn high i mean 12 and 13 alone and 
to be, you know, I love 10 and 11 too. <laughs> it just, it just, it just really, you know, shows you what someone who is rather plausibly given as it was network television, kind of give it a free reign. Yeah. to to do whatever they wanted with this kind of show and, and not to beat a dead horse but it's a horse it's a dead horse that definitely needs beating to mm-hmm. to compare it to oh i don't know clarice yeah, yeah. which is as dry and dull and and formulaic as any you know you know, you know crime procedural show has existed mm-hmm. where that would just you know they play it very safe um you know, they, 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 they seem to forget that, you know, in, in the Hannibal Lecter universe, you know, beyond Sounds of the Lambs, it does get very weird and, yeah. and very fantastical and not really resembling much of real life. Yeah. And then they're like, nah, you know, we're just going to make this a detective show. Yeah. It, that could have existed at any time. Um, right. It's sort of like taking the story of Dracula and then making it, you know, about being a solicitor. Or taking Dracula and putting him into outer space and giving him giant cauliflower about cauliflower balls on his head. Exactly. Yes. And speaking of the Vorvon, that is available on our Patreon right now. <laughs> I was gonna uh, say you're not gonna have any idea what we're talking about unless you <laughs> pony up the cash. Come on, man. What are you waiting for? Christmas is coming. We got kids. <laughs> they want kids. You know, what, you know what kids want? Stuff. <laughs> Stuff we costs give money. Give us yeah. money. I can't divert my funds into paying for this this podcast now. Uh, that just about does it. Um, once again, if you haven't listened to our episode for episode twelve, please do so. Uh, we're get we're doubling up here. Um, I'm not sure when we will pick up Hannibal again. We've got some things coming in the hopper uh, that we think you'll like, and we don't want to rush through Hannibal, honestly. It's it's too good to, we love to savor. You know what I mean? It's, you know, savor, savor, like a, like a nice piece of lawn pork. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, and so we have fun stuff coming your way on Kill by Kill and our new extension, Kill by Kill After Dark, where we talk about the sexier side of murder. <laughs> we just got to get our robes, <laughs> our incense, yeah, our candles. Turn the lights down low. Make that, sudden, make, that, make that freaky scene. Going to pop a bottle of red wine. <laughs> mm. You got a little dribbling off your lip. <laughs> Take that off for you. <laughs> oh, I, speaking of, speaking of, uh, you know, things in one's mouth. Um, yes. I, th- I think this is the first time that in this episode that Hannibal served a dish that did not look appetizing to me. Which one was that? <laughs> the, uh, the aspic. The, oh, yeah, uh, the, with the, the mushroom sticking all out of it. The, the, the jelly dish. I was like, mm, don't mm. know, Jack. Don't know. Savory jello. Mm. Don't, so don't, don't, like the, don't like the mouthfeel on that. Ooh, say mouthfeel again. That's sexy. Mouthfeel. (laughs) Ah, you broke me out of it. Anyways, (laughs) I'm going to do entire episodes in that voice. So if you like that character, he's totally coming back as we talk about very unsuccessful erotic thrillers on Kill by Kill. Um, And all sorts of fun stuff is coming your way on the regular Kill by Kill side as well. Until then, don't worry, folks. The body count will continue for myself and for Gina. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye.